In the previous episode, we dug a huge pit, set up the formwork and poured concrete. As a result, we ended up with this wine cellar with a spiral staircase. And at the end of the episode, I went into a mysterious corridor. Today's episode will unveil the secret curtain, but let's take it step by step. We are entering the second room. Something has already been dug up here. A cellar, pickles, preserves. This works in our favor. It will be easier and we will have to dig less. Yes, simultaneously excavation work was also being done in the adjacent room, which was off camera, as our task is to create a secret room underground simultaneously. Yes, that's right. The secret room was featured on a million subscriber channel. What can you do? That's the job. What's the idea here? Next to the wine cellar, under the adjacent room, we need to build an underground structure with an entrance that will be accessed through a secret hidden door in the wine cellar. But first we need to dig a huge pit, which is exactly what the guys are doing, while also finding artifacts from the past. After the main construction debris is removed, we try to somehow structure the digging process, which is quite difficult because the soil is very fine sand that immediately collapses. However, gradually and methodically, we manage to organize the work while simultaneously removing the old supports. Apparently there used to be a cellar here, or maybe it all stopped at the attempt to organize one. History is silent about it. But we are firmly determined to finish what we started, and very soon the results can be evaluated. After managing to form a more or less correct shape of the future structure, we start constructing the retaining wall, which will partially serve as the formwork. There's no other way to work in such sandy soil. It's straightforward. We took solid pine timber, cut it to size, assembled the base of the future structure outside, then lowered it into the pit and continued the assembly on site, which is what you see on the screen. As we built these retaining walls, we delved deeper and deeper into the ground, simultaneously removing old supports and other unclear structures from the former strange cellar, and more. In the end, the amount of sand we will manually extract from this pit will be just over 40 cubic meters. To put it in perspective, that's three trucks like these, and all of this was done manually by these people in gloves. By the end of the second week, when most of the sand was already on the surface, hands and backs started to express their dissatisfaction with what was happening. Of course, such discontent is first heard by the brain. That's when the idea to hang a simple winch was born, which significantly made life easier. Now it really started to look like proper, well-coordinated teamwork.
Bucket after bucket was brought to the surface, while the retaining walls opposite kept settling lower and lower, and so it went on for another week. In the end, just the earthworks alone took a full three weeks for the three people, previously referred to as machines. The next step for these machines was to eliminate the former floor's decking, as very soon there will be a monolithic concrete floor here, which will also serve as the roof of our bunker. They carefully removed the flooring, then took out the beams and extended the walls to the required level. As I mentioned earlier, this bunker will be accessed through a corridor, the entrance to which is hidden behind a hidden door in the cellar. We will work on the devices in the cellar in the next episodes, but we need to make the corridor and the entrance door to the bunker now. For this, we are cutting out the opening. The next step is to carefully cut the boards to size in order to precisely assemble the boxes that will serve as formwork for the support columns. According to the plan, we need to get nine such supports, as we have grand plans for this floor, but more on that in the next episodes. Now, we lower the shields into the bunker and construct the formwork boxes on site. I think everything is clear here visually. And a day later, we have this beauty. Nine standalone structures that will soon be filled with concrete. But first, we prepare the base by thoroughly soaking it with water. Of course, such architectural structures are definitely not made without reinforcing bar, and we absolutely won't either, for sure. First, we cut the reinforcing bar to the required size. The next step is to build this kind of structure by exactly tying element to element. After that, we place them into the formwork and we get strong reinforced supports, repeating this process nine times in a row. After the reinforcement structures were placed in all nine formworks, we made sure that the dimensions were correct and that they matched the height of the formwork precisely. We take them out and tie additional elements that will carefully and securely connect the columns and the slab. We also add plastic spacers, which certainly help maintain a certain distance to the edge of the formwork, acting as a limiter. As a result, we eliminate the possibility of the reinforcement being placed at the very edge, as required by the standards. We had just finished reinforcing the last column when the concrete mixer arrived. Since we are pouring the supports in a confined space, indoors, it was not possible to arrange direct delivery of the mix from the machine to most of the supports. But as you remember, we still have three machines that do not have such restrictions. They solved this problem with the help of the usual buckets. Shovel by shovel, bucket by bucket, and all nine posts are filled to the top with concrete, which we finally compact using a submersible deep vibrator before heading off for the weekend. And so, two weeks later, on one of the Mondays well-rested, we get back to work. The first thing we do is remove the temporary flooring to replace it with a more reliable one. But first, 
we install ventilation in the future bunker. This point will function as an exhaust and the air supply is provided in the neighboring wine cellar. We laid the pipe, buried it, and picked up the shovel again. Since we now have strong and reliable supports, we are organizing a small corridor along them that will connect the wine cellar and the future bunker. Just two more meters of earthworks and the long-awaited meeting. The next stage involves receiving another batch of timber and building temporary support walls. This stage is extremely critical and consequently somewhat stressful. We need to construct a ceiling that will have more than six tons of concrete poured onto it in a couple of days. I think everyone would work more calmly if TikTok didn't occasionally throw in videos like these, but it did. The first thing they did was build the flooring over the future corridor and level the entire perimeter. Meanwhile, at the other end of the room, we finished reinforcing the corridor overlap and decided to concrete this section manually so that the next layer could be poured as a single monolithic slab. Before concreting all of this with six tons, we first lay the cable into the future bunker. The next day began with reviewing this video, and as a result, we reinforced the formwork just in case by adding a few more props, checked the old supports, and ultimately, with the help of TikTok, constructed this structure, which just needs to be covered with a sturdy board. In the final stage, we level everything. A rake, a laser level, 40 minutes of work, and it's ready for insulation. It's all very straightforward. They explained this type of insulation in detail in the previous episode, where they also poured the floor of the neighboring room. We laid out the insulation, covered it with film, and started cutting the rebar. In our case, it is polymer rebar. Considering its weight and strength, I can definitely and absolutely say that working with it is a pleasure. The cost is almost the same as metal rebar, but in terms of delivery and loading, the overall costs are significantly cheaper. Of course, if you buy directly from the source, meaning the manufacturer, which is exactly what we did. In the end, we very carefully installed homemade beacons made of metal profiles, leveled them using studs, and played our favorite video once again. Feeling inspired, we went to meet the mixer extremely carefully. As they say, the mixer is spinning, nerves are fraying. The layer here is decent, and a decent layer is not 15 centimeters, but a full 20, which we compact with an immersion vibrator while fluttering, recalling our favorite video. Unfortunately, we didn't add to the collection of these masterpieces and didn't make history, but we will definitely try again.
Two weeks later, on one of the Mondays, we finally, after a long wait, returned to work. First, we dismantled the formwork, like a puzzle, board by board, gradually lifting the boards to the surface through the wine cellar. Now, this is the only way out of the underground. Meanwhile, from above, we are trying to reach the metal beacons. First, we take out the precautionary cloth, then we unscrew the nut that was holding the beacon to the stud, and finally, we ruthlessly pull out the square profile, which is no longer needed here. And its presence only weakens the overall structure significantly. And we have ambitious plans for this structure. Looking ahead, I will say that we plan to place an object weighing five, six tons here. Therefore, we laid additional rebar in the groove and poured concrete. They dismantled the formwork. Now we just need to remove this film from the ceiling and bury this little guy, which we couldn't lift because it's very heavy. Now we will very carefully bury it right here so that we don't have to absolutely carry it out. And then we will completely level the surface, the entire floor base, for further smooth and even tile laying process. In the end, we securely buried the stone, then removed the film to allow the concrete to dry faster and started laying the tile. First, we carefully and precisely marked the level all the way through the entire perimeter, particularly. The next step in the process is to carefully and meticulously remove the soil using the clearly marked level as a precise reference point and then compact it thoroughly around the entire perimeter of the designated area. By that time, the tile had just been delivered, unloaded, and they gradually started lowering it into the bunker. And then everything follows the standard procedure, cement sand bedding and tiles on top of it, and so one after another. Actually, at the moment, we are currently contemplating the overall and detailed arrangement of this room. The idea is that this will be a secret room with a hidden door. It would definitely be very interesting to hear your opinion. It really depends on him how we will set up this bunker. So, I am waiting for the boldest suggestions in the comments under the video. As you know, we don't look for easy ways and are ready to put in a lot of effort into the implementation. And I suggest we come up with the concept together. As a result, it took a full day to lay the tiles and the very next day we got to the most interesting part which was making the door. The first thing we did was cut the metal. In the workshop we are making frame base of the door. We also carefully cut and drill the embedded parts. At this point, this is the base that matches the door opening. There's not much to invent here, unlike with the design, but more on that later. First, we need to make sure that the frame fits and the door opens freely. So, we have already brought the main door frame for installation, a fitting, and we are taking it back to the workshop for further improvements. We will be carefully working on installing the locks and enhancing the exterior appearance. Brought it in, carefully installed it, and securely hung the door. Everything was fitted and everything works. Everything opens and closes smoothly. Now we can carefully remove the door frame and take it to the workshop for further refinement and precisely detailed work. In the end, the door will ultimately have a lock that recognizes fingerprints and opens it. There will also be a hidden lock cylinder in case of a power outage. In the future, we will integrate all the home's functionality into an app, something like a smart home, and this door can be opened remotely. We will show all the mechanisms and connections in our bunker setup series. Today, we will work on the exterior part of the door. We used a neural net and asked it to create a futuristic design, a brief overview of how it happens. 
After the initial trial sketches that didn't suit us, we decided to speed up the process and use a neural network to generate multiple options. Once we got what we were looking for, we started refining the design. Then, when the final sketch was drawn and approved, the drawing was broken down into vector layers for CNC work. And so a couple of days later, the futuristic image from the neural network turns into a real door. The main overlay will be made of plywood. First, we cut out the overall shape. As is traditional for such purposes, we use routers from woodwork. Currently, it's the best offer on the market and the perfect price-quality ratio. We highly recommend it. As you can see, under the main grey overlay, the wood texture is visible. The wood texture is laid out in a herringbone pattern. Well, who are we to argue with a neural network? So we repeat the design. We apply glue to the plywood base and lay out the oak slats. The next step involves thoroughly sanding all the individual elements to ensure each piece is smooth and ready for the next phase. Once everything is sanded meticulously, we prepare the parts for assembly. It will certainly serve for the important purpose of attaching the LED light strip. Later on, the strip will be glued here using adhesive. The thickness is absolutely perfect and just right for mounting the strip itself. And this entire assembled part of the door, which is carefully and securely attached to the door itself, will be securely attached to the door. As is tradition, we celebrate each episode of the farmstead with a delicious dinner cooked over a campfire. And this episode is no exception. We have also created a separate culinary channel where we publish full episodes of these food blogs. Anyone who is interested, join us. The link is in the description. After the main sandwich is assembled, we move on to painting and assembly, as you can see on the screen. Just recently, a video was released on the channel where we made a sensor floor out of slabs. The result exceeded all expectations. And then I thought about making a floor out of slabs on the farmstead, but without sensors and a starry sky. I'm interested in hearing your opinion. In my view, it would fit perfectly in our little house. But I clearly have a biased opinion towards slabs, so I ask for your support and opinion in the comments. Thank you. And if you haven't seen this video yet, I'll leave the link in the description. So, here's what we have. In the upcoming episodes, we will work on the wine cellar. In it, we will create a hidden door
behind which is this corridor and our fantastic door. I am eagerly awaiting your suggestions for setting up the bunker. Best wishes from the Axe.